Quitting your nine to five at the wrong time can absolutely cripple you. And is print on demand the right path to go down if you do want that ultimate goal of leaving your nine to five? And if you do already have a print on demand business, is it achieving what it's capable of achieving? There's absolutely nothing wrong with a nine to five job. I can't stand it when people you know, bash them and say all these things. Because at the end of the day, however hard a nine to five job is, working for yourself and building a business from scratch is so difficult and it's so stressful. And if someone says, oh, quit your nine to five job and work for yourself, it's amazing. Look at all the supercars on Instagram and the fancy houses. Just ignore Please ignore, because it's not true. However, there are some people out there, like myself, who don't really like the nine to five. I don't like having a boss. I don't like having things that I have to do for someone else. I don't like building up someone else's company so that, you know, at the end of the day or the end of however many years, they've got this big thriving company and I've just got the paycheck that I've been given. I like to build my own business. And if you are like that and you want to know how you can achieve that, either with print on demand or just in general, then you've come to the right video. It's really crazy how many people don't think about these critical factors that I'm going to talk about in today's video when it comes to determining whether or not they should or can quit their nine to five job and whether or not print on demand is viable enough for you to be able to do that. So I wanted to create a brutally honest video, very little editing. I've turned the camera on. I've got my notes here and stuff, but I just want to talk to you like as if it was a FaceTime call. I'm just speaking to you from the heart, kind of going over everything about leaving your nine to five or when it's when you're making enough money to do that. And if print on demand can enable that. In terms of earning potential, print on demand does have serious earning potential. There are people earning zero dollars and there's a lot of people earning zero dollars, but there are also people earning a million dollars a month and then there's everyone in between. So there is a lot of potential here. Just don't hand in your notice yet. I've been in this exact position I dropped everything I was doing to go all in on my print-on-demand business. And at the time, it was a mistake. I dropped things way too early. I dropped my main income. And I didn't make money from print-on-demand straight away. It's a grind. It's really, really hard. But I've come a long way since then. And I've actually been able to make over $250,000 from print-on-demand in various ways. So this video, this like this is all coming from experience and I just want to help you get to a place in your life where you will feel happy with what you are doing. So a few vital questions need to be asked to determine what kind of success you need from print on demand to be able to pay all of your bills, but not just pay your bills, but also enjoy life. What are you earning in your nine to five if you have one? And what are your monthly expenses? Well, the annual mean wage in the United States is $53,490 a year. Obviously, for the next part of this video, base all these calculations on your actual yearly earnings if you have a nine to five job. As for monthly expenses, well, this will be different for everyone. So I'm just going to use myself as an example here. And I'm going to share with you my exact monthly expenses and what I need in order for print on demand to be able to be my main thing. Every month, I have £4,120 worth of expenses. And because a lot of you are from America, that is $5,200. And those are my non-negotiable expenses. That's my mortgage, my bills, uh, my phone bill, subscriptions, my cars, those kind of things where I have 
signed up to some sort of payment plan and I can't just leave if I wanted to. Well, I probably could, but it would it would be difficult. If I wanted to go on a holiday one month or go and buy myself some new clothes, well, that's not factored into this £4,120. Once I start including the enjoying life expense into my monthly expenses, it goes up to around £5,000 every single month. And I think this is really important to consider because when you are working out how much money you need to survive, don't just work out what your bills are. You don't just want to survive. You want to enjoy life. You want to thrive. You want to actually have a good time. There's no point just getting up every day, working all day, going to sleep, getting up every day, working all day, and then turning 85 and realizing that's all I did. You know, you actually want to be able to earn enough money where you can go and enjoy life. Now, on top of that £5,000 a month that I have of expenses, I like to ensure that I have some sort of buffer. And when I say buffer, I mean an amount of money set aside that isn't like a rainy day fund. You know, I, I, it's not to be used for fixing a boiler or replacing tires on my car. It's a buffer. It's... <laughs> How, how, how should I put this? It's all hell has broken loose buffer and maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've injured yourself some way. Maybe you've fallen ill and you can't earn money. It's that buffer and it can only and should only be used in that emergency. So I like to try and have a six to 12 month buffer in, in this scenario. And for £5,000 of monthly expenses every single month, I would need to have £30,000 to £60,000 in a bank account before I would make any large decisions, like buying a house, a new car, uh, quitting my job, trying a new venture. I'd want to know that I am safe for at least six to 12 months. And I highly recommend everyone else does this because it really puts your mind at ease. I, I fully understand that Everyone will have different expenses. These are just my expenses. Your expenses, you might, you might have kids. You might have a larger mortgage. You might have rent. Who knows? You have to work out what your expenses are for this scenario. So what I would suggest doing is, and you can do this right now if you really wanted to, is to get a pen and a piece of paper, write down your income. You don't have to share this with anyone. Again, all, all those people online being like, share your income, share your... like whatever you want to do is completely fine. So write down your income on a piece of paper and then write down all of your expenses. You don't really need to detail each expense, just work them all out and put the number there. If you can cut back on certain things, then brilliant. But I'm not suggesting that you have to do that. I'm just saying write, write those numbers down so that for the next part of this video, we can accurately work out what it will take for you to have an amazing life, paying those expenses and also enjoying life, going on holiday, taking your kids out, whatever it is. Now let's figure out a few things. What is your earning potential for print on demand? How long will it take you? Is print on demand too saturated? And is the stress and anxiety of working for yourself better or worse than having a boss? Let's start at the beginning. What is the earning potential of print on demand? Again, this is all going to be from my personal experience and experience of people that I've helped. So I mainly sell on three platforms, Etsy, Amazon, and Shopify. Within those platforms, I've worked it out and I typically aim for a $7 profit margin per t-shirt sold. Now, the reason why I've said it in dollars is because I typically sell in the United States. It's a much bigger market and the market tend to like print-on-demand t-shirts a lot more than the UK market. But either way, $7 is around £5.50, which is an important number because we're going to work that out with our previous numbers as well. So in order to survive each month, I need to work out £5,000 a month of expenses divided by £5.50 because that's how much I'd be making per t-shirt. So I would need 909 sales per month across those three platforms, Etsy, Amazon, and Shopify. Now, like I said before, there's surviving and paying the bills and doing just that, but then there's also enjoying life and indulging a little bit, spending money on takeouts and holidays and whatever you want to spend money on. I, I love cars and I love car, car experiences and that's what I like to spend my money on. 
Everyone's different. So when I factor that in as well, I like to say that every month it would be nice to have around 8,500 pounds. And that's including the 5,000 for my bills that I that are non-negotiable. So in order to be able to afford that 8,500 pounds, I would need 1,545 print on demand t-shirt sales per month. Like I said earlier, these numbers are all relative. You might have way less expenses than me. You might not care about going on holiday or the complete opposite. You might absolutely love traveling. So all of these numbers will really depend on your situation. And I will explain when it's right to quit your job if you want to. I'll also explain very soon if print on demand is the right thing for you, depending on how much money you need to enjoy life. So how realistic is 1,545 sales per month? How long will this take? And is print on demand the right business to achieve these kind of sales? I've just dropped my slipper again. Now, 1,545 sales a month is 51 and a half sales a day, split between, in my situation, Etsy, Amazon, and Shopify. This is not a lot of sales. You know, that's less than 20 sales per platform per day. However, and this is the big thing, this is the thing that not many people talk about, especially on Instagram and YouTube. 51 and a half sales per day is a lot of sales if you are just starting out. If you haven't validated if your designs are good, if you've never done this before, if you don't know what you're doing, or if you're just fresh in the game. 51 and a half sales a day is not easy. It's easy if you're more of a veteran or you've been doing this a while, but at the beginning it's hard. When you first start print on demand, you will most likely get no sales the first few months. And don't let that discourage you. I'm just being honest here. I, I don't want to give you false hopes or false dreams or anything like that. It's hard. This is not a get rich quick scheme. Despite what some people out there are saying, make money on print on demand fast isn't a thing. You've got to get rid of the word fast. You can make money on print on demand, but it's difficult. It's a grind. It's, it's a process. And if you can survive that process, then it can be really, really profitable for you. For example, when was the last time that you watched a video, how to get six pack abs in one week? It, you probably haven't. And if you have watched a video like that, it's complete bullshit because it's not possible. I don't think it's physically possible unless you basically have it already. It's, it's, it's impossible to get six pack to get a, 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 a an in shape body it takes a heck of a lot of time hard work dedication dieting exercising it takes a lot of hard work and i know i'm not suggesting that you have to bicep curl your way to print on demand sales but i'm just trying to give you an example of something that might seem more relatable to a lot of people getting fit and healthy is really really hard Creating a successful print-on-demand business is also really, really hard. It's not going to be this easy thing that everyone does and succeeds with. There is incredibly little chance that you can just upload products to Etsy today and then tomorrow you start getting sales. You know, you need to start getting ranked on the algorithm. You need to make sure your listings are good. You need to stand out from others. Your designs need to be good. Your SEO needs to be good. Your mock-ups need to be good. Everything needs to be and I say good, but everything needs to be, at this day and age, amazing to get sales. And that entire process is incredibly difficult and time consuming. So how long should it take? And this is the question that I feel like a lot of people have. How long should it take for you to see success with print on demand, but not just see success, see enough success to make, in this scenario, 1,545 sales a month. Well, this depends on your approach. So let's go over the two platforms first, Amazon and Etsy. If those are your two platforms, then uploading to those platforms consistently will eventually result in sales if 
like I said earlier, your designs are good, your listings are good, your your SEO is good, your mock-ups are good, you stand out and you're actually making content that people want to buy. And on top of that as well, there is a period of time where things need to rank with the algorithm and, and the elephant in the room here, there is a huge element of luck to this business. For some reason, no one wants to talk about the luck side of things but it definitely plays a part, especially when you are relying on Etsy or Amazon's own algorithm to get sales. You know, if you're running ads, then you are in more control of the outcome there, you know? But if you are just uploading designs and hoping to get sales, there is going to be a huge element of luck. And anyone that is seeing success with Proton Demand that doesn't admit that there was luck to it is lying to you. Okay, even I, even I admit it, the sales that I get, a lot of the time, it's down to being lucky. You know, yes, I've put all the effort in and you can increase your chances of luck. So for example, if you just upload a random design to Etsy and you hope to get a sale, you're going to need a lot of luck to get that sale. But if you spend hours and hours researching the design, researching the niche, researching the price, best prices, the mock-ups, making an amazing design, you are increasing your, your luck factor so that when you do eventually get a sale, yes, there is still an element of luck there, but you have laid way more seeds and increased your chances of getting lucky in order to get that sale. Now, if it's been three months of you doing all of that hard work, like building a perfect body with a six pack and whatever, whatever a perfect body is, I don't know, right? The same amount of hard work and dedication, if you are putting that into your print on demand business, and again, I'm not saying bicep curl your way to a sale, but if you are putting that effort in to your print on demand business, specifically with Etsy and Amazon, and it's been three months and you haven't got a single sale, then I would say there is something wrong. You know, that some, something has gone wrong along the process and I would love to help you in that matter. Please leave a comment down below or if you sign up to my email list, you can respond to any of the emails that I send and have a conversation with me and we can try and figure out and determine why and what's gone wrong. But after three months, you should have seen some sales and you should start seeing some consistent sales. Now, if your approach is the Shopify side of things, well, Shopify, you don't have any traffic. So you need to run your own, whether that's free traffic on social media or Facebook ads or TikTok ads or whatever they could be. If you're running ads, I would say that you should start seeing sales after about two weeks. Now, you could see them before two weeks. You could see them after two weeks. But after two weeks of testing ads and spending money on ads, if you still haven't seen any sales, then you've really got to like, reevaluate everything, like your sales, your, sorry, your ads, your designs, your shop, your landing page, all of it. Because if you're spending that money and you're driving that traffic, you should see sales. Now, the reason why I don't recommend this for everyone is because this is expensive. It can cost you five, six, seven hundred dollars to actually run ads on Facebook to your Shopify store. And not everyone has that. Now, eventually you should definitely go down the Shopify route because the profit margin is better. You have you have the customer's email. It's your store. So you shouldn't really be worried about getting closed down for whatever reason. And also it's a proper business. You know, you could sell that for multiple six, seven figures down the line if it's a successful Shopify store. You know, you're actually building a brand. So I definitely recommend it down the line, but maybe not at the beginning. So this number, for me anyways, 1,545 sales a month. How long should that take? Well, I hate to put a number on something like that because I don't want to give you any false hope. I don't want to say to you, it's going to take you four months 15 days, 12 hours, 2 minutes, and 37 seconds for you to get 1,545 sales a month. Because no one can tell you that. And anyone who says they can tell you that is just telling you what you want to hear. So I'm not going to say there is a set amount of time. What I will say is, like I said before, if it's been three months, you should, you should be getting sales. At that point, it's going to be about scaling up, adding designs, and it will be a process. So let's just say after three months, you're getting 10 sales a day, you know, which is very realistic. I've, I've done that. I know many people who have done that. It's possible. If that's 
if that's the direction you're going in, you can start calculating, okay, if I'm getting 10 sales um, from this many designs, I need to keep adding designs and it will, it will be, it will be a process, right? But the trajectory of getting to that 51 and a half sales a day is in sight. It's, it's very realistic, right? It doesn't seem impossible anymore as soon as sales start coming in. Now, the question, should you quit your job for print on demand? No, I don't think you should. And let me tell you mainly why. Print on demand is incredibly hard and you will make a different amount of money every single month. Some months you'll earn a good amount of money. Some months you'll earn terrible money. You know, in, in January this year, I didn't really have the best print on demand month. And it's just how things go. For you to quit your nine to five, you're not just quitting your nine to five, you're quitting safety, you're quitting a, a steady paycheck. Now, I'm all for building a business and I will happily help everyone do that. But if you can keep your nine to five, at least at the beginning, and then build a print on demand side hustle on the side, A, it will be way more enjoyable for you. B, the pressure won't be there. You know, you won't need to make it work. Obviously, you want to make it work, but you'll be able to enjoy the process in making it work. And then the third thing is that money that you are making will allow you, from your nine to five, will allow you to make sure that you are staying afloat, being able to afford life and your expenses and maybe your family and all those things. And then once your print-on-demand business hits a certain level, and by the way, when it hits the level of break-even with your monthly expenses, I still don't think you should quit. I think you should quit when print-on-demand has exceeded what you plan to spend every single month by a long shot, just so that you know that some months, if they're not good, some months are better, you know on average you will be okay. And I have to also add, if you're not yet seeing success with print on demand, please don't blame oversaturation. It's such a cop-out answer. I get a few comments saying it, I've seen comments on other YouTube videos saying it, and I don't understand that, man that mentality. Yes, there are many more sellers in the business. So typically you would think it's oversaturated. However, there are also way more buyers now, way, way, way more buyers now. And the actual industry as a whole, the print-on-demand industry as a whole, is growing every single year by a lot. So you might want to just like say, oh, I can't do print-on-demand. And the reason for that is it's oversaturated. And it's an easy answer. But I'm telling you now, it's, it's not oversaturated. I started a brand new store less than a month ago, okay? And I will be making videos, and I've been getting sales, but I'll be making videos on how I've been getting those sales and how many sales I'm getting in due course. I want to fully test this store out and get it to a certain figure before I start making tons of content on it. But the whole idea of that experiment was to kind of prove to myself as well, because I got a lot of these comments, but to prove that print on demand isn't oversaturated. It is possible. You just have to approach it in the right way. And I'm going to have a whole bunch of videos coming out, how to do print on demand now in 2024, the best, the best practices, the best approach to print on demand. And if you really are struggling and it's been however many months, three, four, five months, and you're not getting sales, please feel free to leave a comment down below, share your experience, let others know if you are seeing, seeing success, if you're not seeing success, share your story, and hopefully it could motivate others. And again, if you have signed up to my email list, which is free, you can respond to any of my emails with your queries, with questions, or with stories, or, or whatever you want. I absolutely love speaking to people, hearing people's stories, hearing you know how they've come from one thing and they've gotten to all these sales, or if they're struggling and how I can help them. There's a lot to it. And this is a really fun business if if it's successful, you know, the the path to success for this business is brutal and it absolutely sucks. The the emotional roller coaster that you go on, not just for print on demand, but for anything, for YouTube, for for Amazon FBA, for any business, for drop shipping, for whatever it may be, it's really difficult. You'll find yourself in a, a, a funk more often than not, you'll find yourself just 
not knowing what to do, maybe even slightly anxious or depressed. And it's it's really, really hard. And I've, I've been in, in, that, in that frame of mind many, many times. And it still happens to this day. You can't help it. And it's just, and I got to tell myself this as well, but it's just important that you look at the bigger picture. You zoom out. And you don't look at this day by day. Oh, I didn't get any sales today. Oh, I didn't get any sales yesterday. Look at it from a bigger picture. You know, I'll give you an example. With my YouTube channel, when I post a video and it doesn't do very well, I get really bogged down. And I just think all that effort coming up with the video, creating everything to get you know, basically no views. But then I zoom out and I look, oh, as a whole, this month, I did well. I got more views than last month or I got the same views as last month. That's good, you know? So when you zoom out of the scenario, you'll hopefully see that it's actually not too bad. Now, if you're zooming out and it is bad, like I said, please feel free to share that, share your story, share your struggles and your wins um, because I really do think you have what it takes. Everyone has what it takes. Just it's really hard. Don't let anyone tell you it's easy. Um, It can happen overnight. It's just, it's not the case. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this brutally honest video about whether or not you should quit your job. Um, Let me know in the comments as well. Do you think you're going to quit your job for print on demand? Where are you at with your business?